Hi, Chris. Hi, let me see if I can. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, you're in the garden. Yes, yes, yes. Social distancing. Um, okay. Uh, nice to see you, Vanya. Let nice me, to see you. Let me immediately see if I can take care of the technical stuff and then. Um, uh, uh, let's start. It's uh, my big pleasure to introduce Christopher Haken from University of Utah. Uh, who will speak today about recent progress in MMP for threefolds and fourfolds and characteristic uh, P, positive characteristic. Thank you, Chris. Well, thanks everybody for joining us uh, with this uh, algebraic geometry seminar under quarantine. Um, so as you know, us older folks are a little uh, tentative with technology, so I opted to do Bema slides, which not everybody loves, but it seemed like the best option. So. Uh, I guess let's get started. So today I'm going to talk about uh, recent progress in the minimal model program in, in dimension three and four and positive characteristic. Uh, let's see if I can figure out. There we go. Okay, so in characteristic, the, the aim of the minimal model program, it's a tool to classify algebraic varieties. Uh, and uh, I'm going to focus on complex projective varieties and varieties over an algebraically closed field of characteristic P greater than zero. So let me uh, just remind you briefly about what is known, uh, about a few of the highlights of what's known over the complex numbers. Um, so the main idea is you start from any uh, <coughs> projective variety, uh, and then you find a distinguished representative in the Barashanov class, which is optimal from some point of view. And once you find this distinguished representative, you can try and describe the moduli space uh, the corresponding moduli spaces. So, uh, for example, uh, if you start with a smooth uh, variety of general type, this means that if you look at multiples of the canonical class, it has many sections. Uh, the number of sections is approximately a polynomial of degree equals to the dimension. Um, so, if we start with such a variety, then there's a fine, there's always a finite sequence of let's call them elementary barational maps. These are flips and divisorial contractions uh, whose output is a minimal model. So for a minimal model, the canonical class is NEF. It has a nice property. And in fact, uh, in the case of general type, it's, it's even better we can show that the canonical class is semi-ample. And what this means is that a multiple of the canonical class gives you a base point free linear series, and hence it gives you a morphism uh, to uh, another variety, which is the canonical model. And in fact, this canonical model can be recovered just from uh, the canonical ring, uh, either of the original variety X or of the minimal model. These canonical rings are the same and they are finitely generated. So the canonical model is essentially just given by uh, the polynomials corresponding to the relations amongst the generators of this finitely generated ring. And in fact, this statement that the canonical ring is finally generated is true in essentially in complete generality. So whenever you have a smooth complex projective variety, the canonical ring is always finally generated. And uh, in some sense, uh, almost every result of the minimal model program, like existence of flips, of divisorial contractions, uh, and other statements, uh, like the Cohn theorem, can be recovered from statements about finite generations of some pluricanonical like ring. So maybe you're considering some KLT pair, XB, or a log canonical pair, and maybe you don't just need to know that the ring corresponding to KX plus B is finally generated, but maybe you need to know that some kind of like Cox ring uh, involving both KX plus B and KX plus B B plus an auxiliary, maybe ample divisor A is finally generated. But pretty much all statements of the minimal model program uh, reduced to statements about finite generation of some uh, pluricanonical-like uh, object. Okay, but um, 
Uh, enough about characteristic zero. What I really want to talk about today is a uh, positive characteristic. So uh, let P be the characteristic of the field that we're interested. And um, typically, maybe let's assume that it's an algebraically closed or at least a perfect field. Uh, the main problem that one immediately notices is that the big tool in characteristic zero is Kavamata Vivek vanishing. This is uh, the tool that's used over and over again in uh, almost every single result about the minimal model program in characteristic zero, it fails already in dimension two and positive characteristic. There are many counterexamples. Uh, you cannot expect to be able to use uh, Kavamata Vivek vanishing. And uh, you know, this, this may lead you to the hope that maybe the minimal model program in positive characteristic fails because you know, everything we know in characteristic zero is based on this vanishing theorem, which no longer holds. So you know, I'm an optimist, so I would like to ask the question, does there exist a smooth projective variety over an algebraically closed field of positive characteristic such that the canonical ring is not finally generated. I'm sort of hoping that this will be true, and luckily I don't have any results in this direction. Uh, but you know, hopefully one day. So um, there are some encouraging signs that things do go wrong in positive characteristics. So the first item is not something that necessarily goes wrong, but it's it's sort of a caution. Uh, something we use in characteristic zero is resolution of singularities. And in positive characteristic, it's known uh, pretty much in full generality in dimension three or less, but it's not known in higher dimension. Um, uh, things that fail are things, for example, like uh, Bettini. So you could have uh, a morphism of uh, smooth projective varieties where the general fibers uh, are highly singular. Uh, this happens very often. Uh, also, if you consider a KLT, uh, sorry, a PLT pair, so if you're not familiar with this, think just of a smooth variety X and a smooth divisor S and ignore the B, uh, then um, the, the center S uh, for a PLT pair where we allow some mild singularities could not be normal in positive characteristic. And in fact, um, another uh, problematic feature of these PLT pairs is that uh, typically we ex expect to be able to extend sections from canonical rings uh, from the divisor to the ambient variety. And there are examples uh, in positive characteristic where this fails. Uh, we cannot extend these sections. And I'll talk more about extending these sections in a bit and why that is so uh, important. Okay, another thing that fails uh, um, in positive characteristic, there's a very recent result of Kashini, Giri, and Zhang, which shows that uh, Itaka's CNM conjecture fails. So the CNM conjecture compares, for an algebraic fiber space, compares the Kodaira dimension of uh, the total space with the Kodaira dimension of the base and the Kodaira dimension of the fiber, and the expected inequality does not hold in positive characteristic. Uh, also, Fujita's conjecture if, for surfaces already is uh, known to fail, uh, in fact, quite spectacularly by work of uh, Gu, Zhang, and Zhang. And uh, this is uh, another result I'd like to mention, is an older result of Su, which says that if you, uh, it's a mixed characteristic result. So if you have a family of smooth surfaces over a DDR and mixed characteristic, it could happen that uh, the um, uh, um, PG jumps up on the special fiber uh, by an arbitrarily large number E. So uh, this is something that does not happen in characteristic zero just by Hodge theory. Um, and so, you know, many, many things that you would expect from characteristic zero do not hold in characteristic P. And as I said, I'm an optimist, so I'm hoping that you know, there'll be uh, more uh, pleasant surprises. Uh, at any rate, uh, what I will talk about today are just uh, positive results. So in low dimension, um, uh, quite a few uh, of the characteristic res zero results for the minimal model program do actually hold uh, in positive characteristic as well. Uh, maybe a word of caution, I'll forget to say it later on, 
anything I say in dimension four, or at least half of what I say in dimension four is contingent on uh, assuming that resolution of singularities exist, and that's not known yet. Okay, so the first, the first result I'd like to mention is that um, it's a theorem with um, several authors. So originally it was established uh, by myself and Cheng Yang, uh, assuming uh, some technical restrictions on the coefficients of the divisor, then Bitcat extended it to uh, a more general setting, uh, and this was done in characteristic greater than five, and more recently it was achieved also in characteristic five in joint work, work with uh, Jacob. So if you take a Q factorial DLT threefold, again, if you're not familiar with uh, DLT pairs, just think of a smooth projective threefold and ignore the boundary uh, over a perfect field of characteristic at least three, greater than three, uh, then uh, we can run the minimal model program with scaling. And so if we start with a pseudo-defective pair, we get to a minimal model. And if we start with uh, something that's not pseudo-defective, we actually get to a Mori fiber space. So that's, that's, that's what we were sort of hoping from the characteristic zero picture. Um, and then the next result, uh, so uh, later I'll give a feeling for how the proof of these results go, but I would like to state uh, the, the main three or four results up front. So the second result I would like to mention is um, um, trying to um, uh, re remove this hypothesis that the characteristic of the field is at least three. So um, uh, it, this, at this point, this seems to be a purely technical hypothesis. And in fact, uh, in the next theorem, you see that if we assume uh, that uh, some extra condition, we can prove uh, the minimal model program uh, for all characteristic P for three folds and for four folds in characteristic P greater than five. So let's, let, 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 me, let me get to the statement in detail. So we consider a Q factorial DLT three fold over a perfect field of characteristic P greater than zero. And again, if it's a four fold, we have to assume that characteristic is greater than five. And we assume that there's a projective rational morphism to another Q factorial variety Y, such that uh, the boundary B, the reduced part of the boundary, the part of the boundary of coefficient one actually contains the exceptional divisor. If this, is, if this holds true, then we can run the minimal model program with scaling over Y. So this is, seems like a sort of a te rather technical assumption, but it's useful in many situations, for example, to try and understand the singularities, uh, you know, what Q factorial DLT threefold singularities uh, actually uh, look like and, and how they behave, or, or, or to construct some special partial resolutions that, that uh, are, are very useful, such as DLT models, or, or collar components. Okay, so I guess the most surprising thing here maybe is not that we can remove, uh, we can prove some result even in characteristic two and three, um, but in some sense to me, it, the most surprising statement here is that things are uh, in the variational case, essentially we have the minimal model program even for varieties of dimension four. And that's that. I find that quite surprising. You know, historically, uh, it took a long time in characteristic zero to start proving results about fourfold. So I'm I'm surprised that these are coming uh, sort of early on in the game. Okay, uh, there's a couple more results that I would like to mention. Uh, so one of the things that you'd like to do with the minimal model program is discuss uh, moduli spaces. And so, for example, you'd like to know uh, the minimal model program for families of uh, three folds over a curve. And so the next theorem addresses that. So I consider, again, this is going to be either a three fold over uh, a field of characteristic any characteristic greater than zero or a fourfold over a field of characteristic at least five. Um, and I assume that I have a morphism to a curve. So I'm thinking of this as a family of three folds. Um, and uh, the central fiber, I'm assuming that uh, the reduced central fiber, so the central fiber may have 
different multiplicities, it may be reducible with different multiplicities, but if I look at the reduced central fiber, I'm assuming that uh, its support is contained in, uh, in the round down of B. So it's contained in the components of the boundary with coefficient one. So this, this sort of uh, is telling me, well, the reduced central fiber is not necessarily simple normal crossings, but it, it's close to being uh, uh, a simple normal crossing fi fiber. Um, okay, so under these assumptions, then I can run the, the minimal model program over, and I say over SS, but that's a typo, it's over the curve, obviously, uh, in a neighborhood of the point. So again, this is useful if you want to study uh, families of surfaces or freefolds, understand their moduli spaces. And um, the next result is um, just stating some small examples of how the Barational Minimal Model Program can be useful. So for example, earlier on, I alluded to the fact that for PLT and DLT pairs, it can happen that the components of the round down of B are not normal. Well, um, uh, it's, while it's true that this can happen, uh, the situation is not as bad as you may think. And in fact, we're able to show that either in dimension three or dimension four and characteristic greater than five, then the components of the round down of the boundary of a DLT pair are normal up to universal homomorphism. So this is like, for example, a cusp. Uh, the cusp is not normal, but it's normal up to universal homomorphism. So in characteristic P being normal up to universal homomorphism is sort of equivalent as factoring through a power of the Frobenius morphism. And another thing uh, that we can show is that uh, a Q factorial DLT pair um, in low dimension uh, has mild singularities. So it won't have rational singularities, this is not true, but it have what are known as bit rational singularities. And, and I'm not going to go into the technical details of this, but it's uh, useful in many situations, for example, when you're trying to establish uh, the existence of rational points on final varieties. Um, okay, so that's, those, are, those are the statements. Maybe, maybe a, brief, a brief recap. Uh, is that uh, the first result is we have the minimal model program for three folds and characteristic great, greater or equal to five in pretty much full generality. Uh, the second theorem is we have for three folds in any characteristic or four folds and characteristic greater than five, we have the minimal model in the barational setting. The third result is uh, under the same hypothesis, we have the minimal model program for families over a curve. And then the final result was essentially sort of a corollary of these results saying something about uh, uh, this helps us to understand uh, the singularities of DLT pair and the behavior of, of these varieties. Okay, and I should sort of caution that in dimension four, um, we have a, a, this work is written down, the, the manuscript is almost complete, but it's definitely still work in progress. So hopefully the, the statements won't evolve too much. Okay, so now I'm gonna take a step back and talk a bit about the techniques and what actually goes into uh, making the salami. So uh, as I've mentioned many times in characteristic zero, we use Kavamata Vivek vanishing, but let me, let me sort of uh, illustrate a little bit how Kavamata Vivek vanishing is used and then uh, let me try and show you uh, what we can, we can do in positive characteristic, uh, you know, e even though the vanishing doesn't hold, how we can adapt, um, adapt to the given situation. Okay, so in order not to make things too technical, I'm, I'm going to make some uh, um, simplifying assumptions, the experts will recognize that, you know, this is sort of a toy version of the base point three theorem. So I'm gonna vastly simplify things and just assume that I have a smooth divisor and a smooth variety. And that this divisor is actually uh, linear equivalent to the canonical line bundle, to the canonical divisor. And it's nef and big and ks is semi-ample. And what I want to show is that then it follows immediately from Kavamata Vivi vanishing that kx itself is semi-ample. Okay, so since I've assumed that s is linear equivalent to kx, 
obviously the base locus of kx uh, is well but this bolded b i mean the stable base locus so the base locus of any multiple kx has to be contained inside of s and i know that mks is base point free so mks itself has no base points inside of s so the plan is to lift these sections to sections of a multiple k of x and since they have no base point inside of x then k of x itself has no, multiples of k of x will have no base locus at all right because their base locus was contained in s so that's where we use kavamata vivic vanishing so kx and s are linear equivalent and they are nef and big divisor so m minus one times kx plus s is nef and big so kavamata vivic vanishing will tell us that h1 of kx plus this divisor vanishes but then by the by a obvious short exact sequence argument we get a subjective map from multiples of kx plus s to by a junction when i restrict kx plus s to s i get k of s and this map is subjective and as i've argued before that means that the base locus of 2m kx 2m kx is linear equivalent to k m kx plus s is going to be empty for any m sufficiently big okay so we're using kavamata big vanishing to show that a map of global sections from the ambient variety to a divisor is subjective and the positive characteristic we will uh, try to use kavamata uh, replace kavamata vivek vanishing uh, by using the frobenius morphism and cell vanishing and sort of this is sort of packaged together in the theory of f singularity which has uh, by now a fairly long history i guess it starts with work of uh, hoxter and hunecke who was developed more by uh karen smith and um, um carl schried come to mind and others of course um but let's 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 try and illustrate this so the frobenius morphism is uh uh sort of determined by the fact that if i pull back a function by the frobenius morphism i get its p power and so uh since we're in characteristic p this induces a, a, a ring homomorphism uh, from ox to the push forward by the frobenius morphism of o of x and i can iterate this as many times as i want by growth in the duality we get a corresponding trace map from the push forward of the canonical line bundle of x to the canonical line bundle of x so think for now that x is maybe smooth so if x is smooth, then this is locally given, you can write it down in, in local coordinates. And so if you have uh, x to the p to the j plus one minus one dx, then uh, for e equals one, this will get sent to x to the j dx. And the ones that I have not uh, listed, the pow powers of x not listed here, will just get sent to zero. Uh, another thing that you uh, are surely aware of is that if I pull back a line bundle under the Frobenius morphism, I get the peef power of that line bundle. You can just think that the transition functions get sent to the peef powers of the transition functions. And so by the projection formula, when I twist the uh, eth iteration of the push forward of omega x by any line bundle, I'm getting the same as the push forward of omega x tensor the line bundle to the power of p to the e so a very high power of the line bundle so of course if this line bundle is ample then i will get cell vanishing higher cohomology of omega x tensor l to the p to the e will vanish for any e sufficiently big and the and hence the cohomology of this push forward will also vanish now one important thing is that this trace map that uh, denoted by phi upper e sub x so upper e reminds me that i'm doing the eth, eth iteration of the growth in the trace map and x reminds me that i'm doing it on the variety x well these maps are compatible with this adjunction process that we did before so um let's look at the following diagram so the bottom line is um just a uh, restriction uh, so I take the canonical line bundle on X, I twist it by the divisor S and by a line bundle L and I can restrict to S. So maybe if S is for simplicity, a smooth variety, in a, a smooth divisor in a smooth variety, 
then when I restrict to S, I just get the canonical line bundle of S twisted by the restriction of the line bundle L to S. Now, the right-hand side is just the if iteration of the, uh, of the Grotendieck trace map on S. Uh, and I have twisted it by this line bundle L restricted to S. And so, as I mentioned before, by the projection formula, I'm getting this P to the E tensor power of L restricted to S. The map on the left side, hand side uh, is maybe slightly more confusing because um, the way I explained it here, you're expecting a map from omega X, F E lowest star of omega X to omega X. Now, if I twist it by L, then I get this L to the P to the E. But if I twist by S, you're expecting to get P to the E copies of S. So what I'm really doing, if you look at the line below, what I'm really doing is I'm composing the, uh, I'm sort of uh, pre-composing this with adding P to the E minus one copies of S. I get the natural inclusion there. And so I get this commutative diagram, um, uh, which um, is replacing the short exact sequence that we had before. And now I'm going to take cohomology of this commutative diagram. And so it looks like nothing changed, but I'm taking global sections. And now, as I mentioned before, we have, uh, by cell vanishing, we have that H1 of omega x tends L to the P to the E will vanish. And so the top row is actually a subjection. So on the top row, we get that sections of omega s twisted by a high power of L actually extend to the ambient variety. So this doesn't tell us that the bottom row is subjective unless we know that the right-hand side, right side map is subjective, which in general it isn't. So um, I really care about what the image of the vertical right-hand side map is. So I give it a special name. We call it S0 of omega S tensor L restricted to S. That's just the image of this homomorphism. And watch out, this is not a functor. S0 is not a functor. So it's, it's just the image of this homomorphism. But by obvious diagram chase, it's clear that uh, this, this, this vector space is contained in the image of the restriction map. So every section of S0, omega S tensor L, will actually extend to a section of omega X S tensor L, just like we wanted uh, with our previous kavamata uh vanishing result in characteristic zero. So um, just to give it's sort of, not very pleasant to call this S0 all the time. So I think of these as Frobenius stable sections. These are uh, in the image of this uh, map induced by the tra trace of the Frobenius. And uh, it would be great uh, if uh, these Frobenius stable sections were actually the whole uh, set of global sections. Things Life would be really easy. In general, this is not true, and I'll say a few words about that in a second, but um, uh, the, the interesting uh, thing becomes to try and, the interesting challenge is to try and identify which sections are actually in the image of this Frobenius, trace of the Frobenius, so uh, which of the se global sections actually belong to S0. And if you can do that uh, effectively, then you can prove many, interesting results that you are proving uh, via kavamata vivek vanishing and characteristic zero. So um, let me say a few words about the Frobenius stable sections. Again, I'm making this uh, simplifying assumption that S is smooth. Now let's assume that L is sufficiently ample. Then it's not hard to see, essentially set vanishing, that S, the Frobenius stable sections are all of the sections. Okay, so if L is sufficiently ample, you're not losing any sections, uh, not surprisingly, because you just replace kavamata v big vanishing by cell vanishing. But if L is small, then it's a really a subtle problem. In fact, to illustrate how subtle the problem is, let, let's just think about almost the easiest case you could think about, which is the case of an elliptic curve, and L will be the, tr the trivial line bundle. Well, in this case, um, it, 
the the fact that uh, well, there's only one section of the canonical line bundle because the canonical line bundle is trivial, and this section is Frobenius invariant precisely when uh, I wrote S is ordinary, but of course S is equal to E in this case. So uh, when the elliptic curve S is ordinary, that's equivalent to uh, every section, the only section being Frobenius stable. And um, conjecturally, um, if we start with, uh, with, an with a variety defined in characteristic zero, for example, an abelian variety, and we reduce it to characteristic P, then we ex expect, just as in the case of elliptic curves, that for infinitely many primes, uh, the space of Frobenius stable sections should be the whole uh, space of global sections of the canonical line bundle. Now, uh, I be believe that this is still unknown for abelian varieties in dimension greater or equal to three. Uh, so um, this is a very subtle problem because it's still unknown for uh, varieties that have been intensively studied and very well understood. So that's a warning that you know, this technique is going to have its limitations. Um, the case, one case in which the technique is extremely useful is the case when we, uh, the, the trace of the Frobenius map is split. So if this, if the map from F E lower star of omega S to omega S is split, then we say that S is globally F split for obvious reasons, uh, Frobenius split. And in this case, uh, for any line bundle L, uh, you can uh, tensor by L and it stays split, uh, globally split, and then you get that all global sections are uh, Frobenius invariant. So this is, this is uh, uh, an optimal situation, um, but you can imagine that it's going to be a very restrictive situation. Uh, even more useful than uh, being uh, for being a split is uh, to be uh, globally F regular. Uh, this is sort of a perturbation of the for being a split hypothesis. Uh, instead of just requiring that the push forward, uh, the E iteration of the for being a push forward of the canonical line bundle uh, mapping to the canonical line bundle split, we also require that this splits uh, uh, are even um, after we pre-compose with multiplication by, say, an effective divisor D. Um, there's uh, the, uh, right below I wrote sort of the, um, uh, an equivalent uh, statement. So the, the next statement is obtained just by tensoring by uh, the dual of Ks on both sides. So when on the left-hand side, you, you tensor by minus Ks, because of the projection formula, you get this factor minus p to the e times ks. So that's exactly equivalent. It's just more convenient, uh, you see in a second, to write it this way in certain situations. So uh, as I was implying, being globally F regular or being F split is, uh, it's a rare phenomenon. In fact, it requires S to be of final type. In the, in the F split case, it requires it to be uh, or sort of log Calabi Yau type, but anyhow, um, uh, it's 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 a strong restriction. If you're interested in varieties of general type, this is not going to be so useful for obvious reasons. Um, and um, if you start from something in characteristic zero for a final KLT final characteristic zero, then um, a reduction mod p um, will, tends to be globally f regular uh, for p sufficiently uh, big. So it's sort of this, this notion of global f regularity sort of goes hand in hand with being final, but, but it's a more subtle condition. Okay, and of course, uh, you could also think of local versions of global f regularity and globally f pure, but these are only interesting in the case of singular varieties because for smooth varieties, you can just write down uh, explicitly, write down the map and nothing interesting happens. So uh, the local version of being globally F regular is strongly F regular and this corresponds to KLT singularities and the local version of being uh, F pure 
um, globally F pure is called F pure and it sort of corresponds to log canonical singularities, roughly speaking. Uh, and, you know, just as uh, KLT singularities uh, sort of, uh, uh, you can think of them as being epsilon better than log canonical singularities, the same is true for F regular versus F pure. They sort of, uh, the definition is uh, very similar, but they're sort of uh, invariant by small perturbations. Okay, so going back to trying and understand these uh, uh, singularities uh, better, uh, one interesting thing does happen, and here we see the first reason why characteristic greater than five plays a role. Uh, if we look at surfaces in characteristic greater than five, uh, and um, a boundary that has standard coefficients, then it actually happens that KLT singularities and strongly F regular singularities coincide. So these notions are not, are not just analogs, but they're, they're actually uh, the same thing. And so if we're thinking of a low dimensional problem, like uh, the existence of flips for three folds, uh, then uh, devices on a freefold will play an important role, and these devices are surfaces. And for these surfaces, we actually have that the theory of F singularities and the usual theory of singularities of the minimal model program, KLT singularities, coincide. So, so that's why the reason why we expect good things to happen. So let me sort of examine this in you know what what usually is the hardest thing to do when uh working on the minimal model program and that's to establish the existence of flips uh now there's uh, uh an important reduction due to shokrov which is known as reduction to pl flip, flips which means that in, in general we don't really need to prove uh, the existence of flips in full generality, we can focus on some special kinds of flips known as PL flips. PL stands for pre-limiting, not for PLT, pre-limiting flips. And in this situation, we have a PLT pair. Again, if you're not used to PLT pair, just think of a smooth variety, a smooth divisor in the variety, and ignore the boundary. Um, otherwise, you know, for those uh, who are more familiar with the technicalities, S is the only log canonical center of this pair, and it's a divisor. And I'm going to focus uh, um, on Q factorial varieties. Now, what is a flip? Well, a flip is a small rational map with relative Picard number one, such that uh, the canonical class, or, or more generally, uh, minus Kx plus S plus B, is relatively ample. Now, in the case of a PL flips, I can also assume that the boundary, this, this device of coefficient one S is also relatively anti-ample over the base of the flip. In order to establish the existence of this flip, what I need to show is that the ring corresponding to Kx plus S plus B is finally generated over Z. In fact, we, it's a local problem over Z. We can assume that Z is affine. So let's just say that this ring is finally generated. If I can show that this ring is finally generated, then the flip is automatically exists and it's just given by proj of this ring. So it's just given by the generators and relations of this ring. Now, one of the things that is not hard to show that Shokorov observed is that to show that this ring is finally generated, because of the condition that minus s and minus kx plus s plus b are both ample over z, so they're essentially one, uh, since rho is one, they're essentially one and multiple of the other, it's not hard to see that in order to check that the canonical ring of kx plus s plus b is finally generated, it suffices to show that the restricted algebra is generated. So what's the restricted algebra? We can restrict this ring to s. So this ring, the nth graded piece is just sections of m times kx plus s plus b, and the restriction of kx plus s plus b to s by a junction is the canonical class of s plus a boundary divisor b of s. So again, if you're not familiar with the technicalities, think of s as being a smooth divisor in a smooth variety x, b is zero, then this is just a usual, just a canonical ring, that's the restriction. Now, uh, so certainly, if the ring corresponding to kx plus s plus b is finally generated, then its image under restriction to s will also have to be finally generated. 
the surprise is uh, that it's enough to show that the image is finally generated. Uh, the reason is, roughly speaking, that the kernel of this map is a principal ideal generated by the equation of this divisor S. OK, so uh, this is good news, because now we, it looks like there's sort of a, an induction on the dimension that we can do. And now we've reduced our problem to showing that a ring in dimension one less is finally generated, which, you know, this, this, this looks like a, a, a doable problem, especially since we uh, maybe are going to focus on three folds. So this is the, uh, a ring, you know, a log canonical surface. Um, uh, a KLT surface uh, ring that we're trying to show is finally generated. The bad news is that we don't know that this map is subjective. So this subscript sub S is really important here. We do not know that the restricted algebra is actually equal to the full algebra corresponding to KS plus, plus BS. If we did know this, then we'd automatically be done because we do know finite generations of rings on surfaces. Okay, so um, for those of you familiar with, with uh, BCHM, what actually happens is that um, uh, the map is not subjective. It's easy to see that it cannot be subjective. Uh, essentially, the problem is given by components of the boundary, uh, in general by non-canonical centers, which are actually contained in the stable base locus of the linear series on the ambient variety. So, but if we look at, if we stare at this carefully, we can cook up another divisor, theta s, which is smaller than bs, and the restricted algebra is equal to the ring corresponding to ks plus theta s. Now, since theta s is smaller than bs, this is also a KLT pair, and so by induction, that has to be finally generated. Of course, there are many technical issues here. For example, who guarantees that theta s is a Q divisor and not an R divisor. And um, so there's a lot of work that goes into uh, making, making uh, this into a theorem. And you know, we, we have to use uh, Diffantine approximation ideas to actually show that theta S is indeed a uh, um, uh, Q divisor and that every section of this ring is contained in the image. That's done by repeated use of kavamata vivek vanishing and it's inspired by uh, techniques introduced by Sue when he was studying the problem of deformation invariance of crew genera. So there's a whole induction uh, where at each step you use kavamata vivek vanishing to get a slightly better lifting results. And in the limit, you, you, you show that you can lift this whole linear series. It, it, it's quite involved. Um, and again, in positive characteristic, it, it, it really doesn't stand the chance of, of working uh, unless we put ourselves in a very favorable situation. And this fav very favorable situation is situations in which you know that the ambient variety is globally irregular. So in our situation, uh, we, we really don't, it's really hard to show that uh, a, a threefold is globally irregular. However, as I mentioned before, Harris result uh, <clears throat> does say that for, for surfaces, with standard coefficients, uh, often they are globally irregular. So in our case, we, this surface S, uh, it's a barational situation, and this surface S is mapping barationally onto its image in, in Z. And uh, in fact, it's sort of a log final over Z. So if you remember before, I did mention that globally irregular, a necessary condition to be globally irregular is that you are, that you are final. And uh, that's true in this case, and uh, gives you hope. And in fact, uh, more or less from Harris theorem, it follows that the pair SBS is globally irregular over Z. And uh, then we can use some kind of uh, inversion of adjunction result, uh, the most general version of which was proven by Omprakash Das. And this inversion of adjunction result will actually tell us that the ambient variety X, uh, the pair, in fact, X, S plus D, is uh, relatively globally F pure over Z 
Uh, it can't be globally F regular because it's something of coefficient one, but if you perturb that coefficient, it becomes globally F regular over the base. Um, <clears throat> so so this, is a, this, this tells us that we have a good substitute for uh, Kavamata Vivek vanishing, and we are able to imitate uh, Chokro's original proof for, uh, um, for flips, for the existence of PL flips in the three dimensional uh, case. And things do work out very nicely. And so, so uh, uh, with, with Cheng Yang, in fact, we show that whenever SBS is globally F regular in the threefold case, we can construct the flip. And it so happens that when P is greater than five and B has standard coefficients, Harris theorem gives us this global F regular uh, condition almost for free. Okay, so next I'm going to look at the Brational case. And remember the Brational case, we, uh, we would um, like to show the result. Uh, let's see, here we go. <clears throat> independently of the characteristics. So we, 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 we want our result to be also true in characteristic two, three, and five. Okay, but in this case, uh, I have something uh, more going on in my, in my favor. So I'm considering the case in which I have a rational morphism from X to Y, and essentially I want to run the relative minimal model program for X over Y. Okay, and I'm assuming that the boundary B contains the support of this exceptional divisor. Obviously, f is equal to pi in, uh, in this situation. Um, actually, no, I take that back. So f will be my flipping contraction, which is happening over y. So uh, f factors pi. OK, so, um, so why, is, why is this situation simpler? Well, I have these actual hypotheses, uh, and I, I, I have this birational map of Q factorial varieties. So for a start, this tells me that there is uh, an exceptional divisor uh, for pi, for this map from X to Y, uh, such that um, uh, with an effective exceptional divisor such that minus F is relatively ample. This means that there has to be a component of V uh, uh, such that minus E is F ample. So this, this component E plays the role of the divisor S that I had uh, in the PL flips situation. But actually, if you play around with this a little bit more, uh, since the components of this exceptional locus actually generate the relative uh, Picard group, it's not hard to see that there is going to be another component of the exceptional locus which is in turn F ample. So you can get both a F anti ample and an F ample component, and then you play these two off each other. So, so what happens when you have uh, these two components in the boundary of B, right? Remember B contains the whole exceptional divisor, so it has to contain these two components. Well, if I intersect these two components, I'll get a curve C. And since one of these divisors is relatively ample, this curve C is not getting contracted. So in fact, the map from C to its image is it's a birational map. And uh, when I do a junction, when I restrict to C, I am getting um, a KLT pair. Well, maybe after some perturbation, uh, a DLT pair or a KLT pair after some per perturbation. But then it's uh, almost immediately immediate to see that uh, I'm, I actually have a, a KLT pair, which is then just equivalent to being globally F regular. Remember, the map from C to its image is just a finite map, right? So there's this globally F regular condition is, is just a local condition, and there's almost nothing to check here. But now, by uh, these inversion of adjunction results that I mentioned, uh, it follows that X itself is globally F regular over Z, and then we can apply uh, the result uh, with Cheng Yang, the original result for existence of flips for three folds. And, you know, this looks, of course, there are technical details that I'm hiding on the rug, but this, this is the main idea. And this looks way too easy. So it's maybe not so surprising that it could hold even in dimension four. But before I talk about that, uh, let me say a few words about the characteristic five case. So in the characteristic five case, um, what we do is we, we, we just really try and analyze carefully what 
what's happening. Uh, now it's we're considering the case of standard coefficients, and uh, uh, in this case um, we have a, a, a relatively log final surface S, and uh, it's well known by work of Prokhorov and Shokhorov that you can find complements. So um, um, we can find, um, so this is slight, uh, oh yeah, it has standard coefficients, so it should be correct. So you can, you can um, find uh, a new boundary divisor, which I'm calling B sub S C, uh, such that uh, six times KS plus B sub S C is linear equivalent over the base to zero. So this is known as a six complement. Now there are two cases uh, of interest. One, case two possibilities that can happen um, one possibility is that in fact this complement is also klt and this in this case it's not hard to see uh by some numerical computations that the pair sb is is in fact strongly f regular and so the previous result of haken and shu applies the interesting case is the case in which the complement is actually not KLT. It turns out that they, we can assume it's PLT. And in this case, um, uh, we, we, we do two things. So the first thing we do is we extend this complement on S to a complement on the ambient variety. So the usual problem that we have to extend sections from the divisor to the ambient variety. In this case, we have to extend this specific divisor, six times the difference between BCS minus BS, we have to extend that to the ambient variety. Um, maybe I need a round down here, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. And since SBS is not globally F regular, that would seem like it's, it's a problem. Uh, so what we do is we, we carefully look at this space of Frobenius invariant, Frobenius stable sections S0, and we identify the ones, the, one, the global sections that lie in there, and essentially those are the ones with, that vanish along certain divisors, and it so happens that this section actually lies in there. So by a detailed case-by-case -case analysis, we're able to show that this section is Frobina stable, hence it extends to the ambient variety, and that's how we get a global complement on X. Now, having a global complement on X is useful, because now we can we can uh, uh, use the corresponding um, uh, results that we proved in the local setting on the ambient variety. We use this pair, and so using a rational minimum model program, which we have shown previously holds in all generality, we can actually extract a divisor corresponding to this non-KLT center on S. Remember, S B. Um, SBC is PLT but not KLT, so there's an interesting non uh, log canonical center. So we can now extract that as a divisor on the ambient variety. So now we've uh, we've made X more interesting. Now the relative Picard number over Z is actually two, and we can then run we can play the two ray game over Z instead of contracting this divisor back down we flip according to the other extreme array. So we run the minimum model program corresponding to the other extreme array. The first flip will be non-trivial. And then eventually we will contract down this spurious extra exceptional divisor that we just extracted. And that will give us our flip. Of course, in order to run, to do this two-ray game, we need to show the existence of other flips. So now the situation is we have this pair, kx prime plus s prime plus e prime plus b prime. We have two divisors of coefficient one. And so we do a case by case analysis again. Essentially, you run into the situation where one of these divisors could intersect the flipping curve negatively and the other one positively. And that's the proof that flips exist in that situation is exactly the same as in the Barational case. Or the other thing that could happen is that they both intersect the flipping curve negatively. Well, in that case, what that means is that some multiple of one divisor will be linear equivalent over uh, for the flipping contraction, will be relatively linear equivalent to a multiple of E prime. 
So you, this gives you a linear series, a one dimensional linear series. So it actually gives you a map to some projective uh, line bundle over, over Z. And actually it turns out that the flip is just given by the normalization of the image of X under this rational map in P1 of Z. So there's sort of an explicit way you, you can essentially construct your flip by hand in this situation. So you have a lot of geometry going on and um, uh, it's not too hard to construct these flips. Um, and luckily for characteristic two and three, they, there are a lot of other cases to worry about and we so far have been unable to find uh, uh, a winning strategy. Okay, so uh, one more word about uh, the four dimensional case. Uh, as I said, um, the, barational, the, the barational case in dimension three seemed quite easy. So it's not surprising that things could work out in dimension four. Um, however, we, we're unable to prove in full generality that if SBS is globally F regular, then the flip exists. In this case now, SBS is a threefold. And, uh, and luckily, there, there just seem to be uh, more technical issues that pop up and we're, we're not able to prove that directly. So, so we, we have to resolve several technical difficulties and we sort of have to go once again through um, uh, running, um, running uh, these uh, techniques developed by Xu for deformation invariance of Puri genera in the setting of a PL flip. So it, it, it requires unluckily uh, some uh, uh, interesting induction. Uh, so I won't get into the details of that. Uh, just wanted to mention that there are uh, uh, several technicalities that come up in the dimension four case. And uh, maybe just a couple of words of what happens when uh, we look at uh, a map, say, from a fourfold to a curve C. Um, then um, we are really focused on the central fiber XS, which is contained in the boundary. And um, now, if you think about it, the central fiber is numerically trivial. So if there is some divisor in the central fiber that intersects the flipping curve positively or negatively, then there has to be another divisor that intersects it in the opposite sign, negatively or positively. And again, that, uh, that looks very much like the Barational case. So, so things uh, seem to be lining up in this case too. There's another case that's a bit more thorny, is the case where um, every divisor in the central fiber intersects the flipping curve trivially, and um, we, we, have to, we have to sort of go back and, and, uh, and look at the, uh, the details of Shokorov's reduction to PL flips to, to make that, that setting work as well. So, so since these are uh, fairly technical, I, I won't get into any of the actual details of the proof. But I'd like to conclude by uh, sort of mentioning, so once again, I'm not, I'm not a big believer that the minimum model program is going to work in general in uh, all dimensions in positive characteristics, especially in low characteristics. But you know, one could hope that there is some general uh, phenomenon, some general good news. So oh, what, you know, what would sort of an ambitious uh, statement be? So maybe the following conjecture is what uh, goes in the right direction. Let's suppose that uh, we have a strongly F regular affine variety. Then uh, we could ask, is it the case, uh, maybe we could even conjecture that the ring associated to any vial divisor is finally generated. Of course, if the divisor is Q Cartier, this is obvious, but if it's not Q Cartier, then uh, this is an interesting question. And uh, we could hope that it's always uh, true for strong F regular varieties, just like in characteristic zero, this is always true for KLT pairs. Uh, so maybe that's a realistic conjecture, but I, uh, I, I don't think that anybody has made substantial progress. Uh, it, it's true in dimension three, but in high dimensions, I don't think that anybody has made substantial progress yet. So, so maybe, um, maybe I'll stop here. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, and uh, we can clap in, uh, in Zoom. There's some option to click. Some.
Thank you. Uh, and please ask, uh, ask questions. There were some questions during your talk, and uh, some of them already been answered by, by ah. participants. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I am unable to see the questions right now. But I, I can read it. If people type, I can read it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. But so, for example, I have a small question. So, uh, resolution of singularities, you use only for extraction of... I'm sorry, repeat that? Where did you use the resolution of singularities? You said some results. Uh, so, 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 especially in the more technical results, uh, many times we have to uh, uh, modify things uh, and, and sort of imitate uh, Shokarov's reduction to PL flips argument. So the first step in that is to take a log resolution of everything in sight so that you have a simple normal crossing divisor. You know, you, you technically, you, you would tend to have divisors of coefficient greater than one maybe, and you just make the coefficient be one and you run a sequence of minimal model programs with different scalings. And uh, we haven't found a, a, a smart way to avoid that. And, um, you know, a natural thing that everybody suggests including myself you know faced with these kind of problems you say okay well just take an alteration and run the argument on the alteration but uh as far as i can tell once you take the alteration it kind of messes up your canonical rings and it's hard to uh deduce the result you wanted from the result on the alteration so i i haven't been able to use alterations effectively to avoid resolution of singularities Okay, thank you, Chris. There's some question that how bad uh, MMP fails in dimension three when characteristic is two? I don't know. I'm hoping it fails, but I, I, I don't have any examples. I, I, in fact, I don't think anybody has any examples uh, where, you know, finite generation of the canonical ring fails even. I mean, there, there was something announced at some point, but there was a mistake, right, uh, in characteristic two. So that, yeah. Okay, any more questions? Uh, okay, no, there's no questions. Uh, Chris, thank you very much. Uh, that was a beautiful talk and uh, I will, I record everything and I will upload and uh, uh, thank you again. And uh, I just reminder that on Thursday, we're gonna talk by uh, Arnaud Baville uh, in different time. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Looking forward to Thursday's talk. Bye. Bye.